the mm. white bread, right. the rice, right. uh, anything that's white. Potatoes, yep. bad for you. Yep. Yep. Next is refined sugar, sweets, and corn syrup. Mm -hmm. I yep. love sugar. Yep. And see... But bad for you. Yep. Um, and what we have to understand is that um, it's not that uh, people need to just, oh, you can't eat these anymore. Because that's what I was told. You can never eat these foods. Okay. Okay. When you say dead, though, what do you mean by dead? Um, it's just a term I came up with to kind of grab attention. <laughs> it sure got my attention. <laughs> you mean it's nutritionally it, yeah, void? Nutritionally uh, uh, deficient, exactly. Okay. Uh, dead kind of uh, gets right to it. Uh, okay. These foods will eventually make you dead. <laughs> All right, trans fats we've heard a lot about. Exactly. Uh, a lot of companies right. are now not making food with trans fats. They're trying Saturated not fats, okay, mm. which is the pork and the, mm. the ham and the bacon. Yep. And drugs. You mentioned smoking, mm. alcohol, um, and, of course, caffeine. <laughs> Come on, Dwayne, you're hurting me here. <laughs> but, again, here's what you, okay, I so want everyone to understand. Okay. It's not that you have to stop eating all of these. Okay. Um, the, the key, wh wh what I usually recommend to type 2 diabetics okay. is make only one change, breakfast. Okay. Don't try to change the world because if you do, you're probably going to fail. And, and, and most people, when they go on diets, they don't feel good. You ever notice a person on a diet? They don't They're feel not good. happy. They're not happy. They're cranky. Exactly. They're cranky. Yeah. So change one thing. Change exactly. breakfast. Just okay. Change breakfast. Coming up, we're going to show you how you can do that. We're going to show you the program that Dwayne created that he now teaches uh, to diabetics through your many workshops. Yes, I know yes. doctors have called upon you and mm -hmm. said, could you come talk to our exactly. type 2 diabetic group? <laughs> and we'll show you that healthy uh, breakfast. Maybe, <laughs> maybe you'll learn a thing or two uh, <laughs> when we come back. We promise it won't hurt a bit. It won't. <laughs> right, Dwayne? It won't hurt. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this Many Voices, Many Visions. Today we're talking about diabetes, and we're interviewing a man named Dwayne McCauley. Thanks for being with us, Dwayne. Thank you. Uh, Dwayne wrote a book called Death to Diabetes, and it's a book that uh, a lot of uh, diabetics, type 2 diabetics, have read. Um, it comes with advice on how to, uh, to make yourself healthy again yeah, and exactly. uh, eventually maybe get yourself off medicine and, and, and live a healthier life. Yeah. Um, you survived a diabetic coma and you came back uh, many ways stronger <laughs> than ever before. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're an engineer so you come to this with a scientific background. Yeah. Uh, before we uh, went to the break we talked about the five foods that people eat that are not the healthiest. <laughs> okay? You call them dead foods. <laughs> Let's lighten things up. Talk about the five live foods. The foods right. that are life-giving and right. have some nutritional value. Yeah. If we could take a look at that. Sure. Uh, the number one um, and my mother said, make this number one. <laughs> vegetables, vegetables, vegetables. <laughs> um, vegetables contain specific phytonutrients that actually help to initi the, initiate the repair process within our cells. So vegetables are very important. Now, wait a minute. You're yes. pushing vegetables, not a pill or a product. Yeah, right. Uh, do yeah. some people look at you kind of funny and go, yeah. it's vegetables? Yeah. Yeah, because the nutritional people, they, they don't want to sell my pill. No. Um, and I don't want to get overly religious here, but you kind of got two choices. God created vegetables. Man created pills. I was dying. Um, <laughs> you got to make a choice, God or man. Yeah. I'm going to go with God. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, my mother went that way. I kind of went along with, uh, with my mother. Uh, so, uh, and there's, there's a lot of research that's been done on broccoli, Brussels sprouts, spinach. The green stuff, yeah, right? Green that stuff. green, yep. crunchy stuff. Yep. That we or even so the bright about. colored vegetables, okay. the red peppers, the yellow peppers, the orange peppers, all the bright colored vegetables. That bright color or that green color, uh, those are carotenoids. These are nutrients. Medical science has proven that these are good for you. <laughs> In my book, I list all the clinical studies. I didn't create this. It, it already existed. All I did is the research that I was taught to do as an engineer. Mm -hmm. And I, when I came across all the research, I was, whoa, and I looked at the South Beach diet, the Atkins diet, the Rosedale diet, every diet in the book. Mm -hmm. Analyzed that diet from a nutritional science standpoint. They all had their good aspects. They all had their bad aspects. And then I looked at the human body. What does the human body require at the cellular level to be healthy? And... Uh, 
and came up with a model based on that. I love that. So liquids, um, water, yep. raw fruit water. juices, filtered mm -hmm. water. Why not just tap water? <laughs> yeah. Well, tap water contains uh, maybe you don't want to tell me. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> too many hard minerals. Okay. And it puts a strain on your kidneys. Okay. And, Lean yeah. protein. I've heard a lot about this. Mm -hmm. You're a big fan of salmon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I used to hate salmon. Yeah. But once my mother taught me how to prepare it, and there's a local woman here in Rochester. Uh, she's called the Phantom Chef. Uh -huh. People at work paid her to come to my house to prepare some meals. Oh, I know the Phantom Chef. Yeah. Yes. So she well, she's been on me. our broadcast before. Oh, okay. Yeah. So she taught me how to prepare some of these foods. And once you learn how to prepare salmon properly, ooh, it's so good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't know if I like it better than a steak. Huh? We have to talk well, yeah, about I mean, that. A steak, but steak is also good for you okay. when, when prepared properly. Red meat is okay. Yes. Okay, so uh, I lean know this protein. Is, I know people are going, this I know. man is crazy. Okay. But if you prepare the red meat properly, if you buy or organic beef, free-range beef, if you marinate it with extra virgin olive oil and a little bit of lemon juice to break down the arachidonic acid within that meat, uh, beef can actually be healthy for you. All right, that's yeah. good to hear. Unsaturated omega-3 fats, the olive oils, yes. uh, the, the, uh, the, the omega-3s which are in the, um, uh, yeah, the, uh, the fish, salmon. The nuts and, and like seeds. But if you don't like salmon, you can eat the eggs. I know yeah, we organic talked about eggs, exactly. organic eggs or omega-3s. Okay, yep. organic whole grains. Okay, because mm -hmm. I like grain. I like mm -hmm. bread. Can I eat it? Can I still if eat it? If you eat organic living bread, it's called sprouted grain bread. It's uh, uh, stores like Wegman sells it. It's called sprouted grain bread. It's in the frozen section. It's a living food. That's why it's frozen. Most bread is sold out in the aisles. That's dead. But isn't it enough to have the whole wheat label on it? The, the whole Not if you're diabetic. Okay. okay. If you truly want to eat the best of the best, you want to eat living food. So a sprouted grain bread is a living food. Most of the other bread is made with flour. <laughs> and flour just doesn't metabolize well within our body. All right, so now you've got the five live superfoods. I want to yeah. take a look at a meal model. Okay, so what are you eating, Dwayne, to get healthy? <laughs> this is what I want to know. Let's take a look at um, this next, uh, we've got this next uh, slide here for you that explains what a healthy meal consists of. Right. And you mentioned starting with breakfast. Yes. That's yes. very simple for a lot of people, yep. okay? Yep. Yeah, breakfast is truly, our mothers were right, <laughs> okay, Bre okay, uh, uh, my mother was right. Um, breakfast is very powerful, and a good example of a powerful breakfast okay. um, is uh, as a, uh, instead of eating grains such as cereal in the morning or oatmeal, have a vegetable such as uh, one and a half cups of steamed broccoli or two cups of steamed spinach. But, but vegetables for breakfast? Yep. yep. And see, here's what you, we got to understand. Why, why do we eat cereal for breakfast? If you take a look at the human body, it, it only makes sense for a child maybe to have cereal in the morning be, to give them the energy. As we grow up, our bodies don't require that extra sugar that you get from cereal. What you really want are healing nutrients because your body just spent seven, eight hours sleeping, detoxing. So your cells are open. They want the best of the best. So why not give your body the best? So the carbohydrate is the vegetable? Exactly. Okay, so is there yeah. any room in this for a, a new, like a muffin? I mean, you know, like a Thomas's English muffin. Mm -hmm. uh, it's better to eat the muffin, muffin for lunch. Again, I'm talking if okay. you're a type 2 diabetic. I see, okay. Now, so if you've you're not got a type 2 diabetic, then you have obviously a lot more flexibility. All right, so you, you consist, the meal consists of a carbohydrate, which mm -hmm. is the vegetable, exactly. a protein like the salmon. Or the organic uh, free-range egg. Okay, yeah. uh, you prepare this with, with a little olive oil or mm -hmm. some other yeah, type of healthy always fat? Use, always use a, a olive oil. Okay. Olive oil is the best of the best in terms of plant oils. All right. Is there any room in this breakfast for coffee? Because, Dwayne, I get mm -hmm. up at 2.30. Yeah. Um, see, there's nothing wrong with having a cup of coffee. There's nothing wrong with eating ice cream. I eat ice cream. Okay. I, All eat, right. I eat apple pie. But as I discuss in my book, there's a healthy way to eat ice cream. There's a healthy way to enjoy apple pie. There's a healthy way to enjoy steak. Okay. So, so that diagram is just an outline, a guide, a protocol. And once you understand the protocol, the formula, you now take what you love and you build a program around that. 
Okay. I know that in your book you mentioned going out to eat, okay? Mm -hmm. and there's a section on going right. out to restaurants. Yep. Um, so uh, for people at home watching thinking, oh my God, this is so restrictive, mm -hmm. I can't eat this way, yeah. you're saying that there is a way to do this. Yeah, exactly. um, you mentioned